Well, Merry Christmas, Life Church Monroe and our family and friends. I hope you're having a great Sunday morning so far, and I hope that you are already feeling the presence of God. Now, I don't know what kind of traditions you have in your home, but in our house, we have something we've done for years. You see, the kids come up early in the morning and they, before we get up, and they open their stockings and they have a great time enjoying the, the few things we put in their stockings. But what you, what you might not know is every one of their presents doesn't have a name on it. In fact, in their stockings, there's a clue in there that they can go on a scavenger hunt and find which wrapping paper is theirs. It's always an incredible time for Michelle and I to watch because they're running all over the house and having such a great time laughing and trying to figure out the clue and, and trying to figure out all those little things that we put in there until they find their wrapping paper and we spread the presents out and then we have our time of gift giving and gift opening. Well, just like that, I'm praying this morning will be a sweet time in your home, a time of laughter, a time that's special, but more importantly, I hope that in these next few moments, that you're going to have such a sweet time in God's presence in your home. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to spend some time singing to the Lord. Vanessa is going to sing, help us sing to the Lord this morning, a, a Christmas song. And then I'm going to get into the Word for a few minutes and give you a challenging message on Christmas. And then we're going to sing again, and then we're going to wrap up. And we hope that today you will experience the power and the presence of God in this morning. Good morning, Life Church Monroe. We're so happy that you are with us on this Christmas morning. Uh, today, we're going to start off with singing a Christmas carol to our God in praise. And if you don't know these songs, uh, there is a link below this video that you can uh, click on the link, and that's where you'll be able to access all of the lyrics for these songs. So let's sing together to our great King this morning. And I love to sing Christmas songs. It's one of my favorite things to do. In fact, if you know me, 
I've been listening to Christmas music since July as I've been prepping sermons. And so today I want to go in for these next few moments. I promise it would be just a few moments. And I want to go in and just talk about a different passage that we don't talk a lot about on Christmas morning. I want to look at John chapter 1 this morning. I want to read it to you and I want to give you three points of why this matters for us this Christmas. And then I'll read us the Christmas story in Luke 2. So John chapter 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light and all that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world, world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now you might be asking, Pastor Sean, why are we not reading the Christmas story this morning? You, your kids might be around the, around the TV right now or the iPad or whatever you're using to watch this time. But what I share with you that this passage has three truths that pertain to us this Christmas. Now, remember this, that the Apostle John wrote this book, wrote this letter to tell the world about Jesus Christ. And he uses a particular word to start this passage. He calls Jesus the Word. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the, and the Word, uh, in the beginning was the Word, let me read that again, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. He uses the, the, the Greek word logos, which is where we get the word word from, to name Jesus. And so John is telling us, in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Now, this is important for us to understand this morning because Christmas is all about Jesus Christ coming for us. So I want to give you your first truth to look in this passage. The first truth I want to give you is, God saw that we needed peace, joy, and hope because of our sin. You see, we lack peace, joy, and hope because sin steals that from us. Sin steals the presence of God out of our lives and keeps us from knowing God. And God knew that we were living in darkness. In fact, in verses 9 through 11, let me read that again. When it was talking about John, it says this, the true light, excuse me, talking about Jesus, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. And, and he even says in the next verse that he came to his own people, and his own people didn't recognize him. This is the singular truth that we have to understand about Christmas. Sin is a problem. It blocks our relationship. And so God knew that we had lost our joy, our peace, our hope, which is all found in him because we had lost our relationship with him because of sin. You see, Christmas is important because it means God knew we had a problem. God knew that we had a condition that we could not cure, and so He did something about it. Which gives me our second truth to look at this morning. God did not stay in heaven, but He took care of the problem Himself. Now, I don't know about you, if you've ever had a time where there's an issue and you talked about it to someone and finally uh, you saw no one was going to take care of that issue, you asked person after person to take care of that issue or that problem, and you said this, fine, I'll do it myself. Well, just imagine in heaven God knowing that you and I had a sin problem. You and I had a problem that separated us from Him, and He didn't want, that, that, want it that way. So what did He do about it? He didn't stay in heaven. He didn't stay removed from us. He sent his son, Jesus, God himself, came and did what was needed to be done to solve the problem of sin. Over 33 years later, Jesus will take the cross for you and I. He would have lived the perfect human life. 
and he would have taken the cross and died for your and I sin as the sacrifice for yours and for my sin. And then he would rise three days later. Christmas is the beginning of that story. The cross is the culmination of what God did when he said, fine, I'll do this myself. And we are so glad this morning we get to celebrate that because without God doing it himself, we're hopeless. And so God comes to give us peace, to give us joy, to give us hope in doing it himself through his power, through his presence and his provision. The third point I want to make to you is this, and I've already said this, Christmas is our celebration of God's grace, which fulfills his judgment. You see, one of the things that sin does is it puts us as an enemy of God. It puts us as an enmity, or excuse me, an enemy that is separated from God. We don't have an intimate relationship with God because of sin. But God, because he came, Jesus, because he came as a baby and lived as a human, dealt with what you and I dealt with, we celebrate that today because he came. Jesus literally took on flesh. He became human. We read that in John 1.14, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That Jesus came, and through his grace, his favor towards you and I, he came to do something about our sin. 33 years, or 33 plus years after his birth, he will die on a cross, and he will forgive all of mankind's sin. And he'll, and he'll share this message all throughout the rest of Scripture one I'll share with you today. You and I were created for an intimate relationship with God. You and I were created to know God. But sin breaks that relationship. It keeps us from knowing God intimately. And so God, being full of, of grace and love and mercy towards us, sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be born a human, to live perfectly for 33 plus years, to keep every law that God told us to keep, which you and I might have broken or, or others had already broken. And then Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice for us on the cross and dying the perfect death for you and I so that the perfect sacrifice would be made. But he didn't stop there. Three days later, Jesus would rise from the grave, show everyone that he is God, proving who he is, and now sits at the right hand of the Father. And he sends the Holy Spirit to speak to you and I so that you and I can have a chance not just to know him, but to walk with him intimately. Now, why does that matter this morning? Well, if some of us watching this right now, you might have grown up in church your whole life. Maybe Christmas, you've, you've read the Christmas story in, uh, in Luke chapter 2, and you've had that special time of prayer, and you've gone away. Maybe it's just been a religious thing or a traditional thing. And, and tradition is great, and, and religion has some great things in our lives. But what you and I need is an intimate relationship with God. I would ask you this question this morning before I close. Do you have an intimate relationship with God? Do you know God personally? Not know of Him, but experience Him. Do you, are you lacking joy and hope and peace in this season? Or maybe you never had it. And it's not just this season, but maybe this season has brought out how much you're lacking. I want to encourage you right now to just do some self-examination. Maybe you grew up like in church like me but you never really started a relationship with God. You did all the religious things, you did all the traditional things, but you never gave your life to Jesus and you never let him have control. Right now, where you're sitting in your living room, you can pray and cry out to him and say, God, you can do this in your head. Say, God, I am sorry for my sin. I trust what Pastor Sean just said, where my sin separates from me, separates me from you. So God, please forgive me for that sin. I trust that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross paid for my sins. And so God, today I'm surrendering to you and I give you my life and I want to have an intimate relationship with you. Maybe right now would be a great time to pray that prayer. Or maybe when you get alone and spend some time thinking about that, that you'll surrender to Jesus. Or maybe the, the reminder this morning in your room, in your living room or your kitchen, wherever you're at right now watching, maybe the reminder is that Christmas really is about Jesus coming for you and I. Let me read the Christmas story as I close, and then we're going to sing another song here in just a moment. Uh, but I hope that as we read this Christmas story in Luke chapter 2, and maybe you want to pause this for a moment and have somebody in, in your home just read this Christmas story and to remind us what happened so many years ago on Christmas Day. 
It says this in Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth, to Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away, they went, went into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that happened. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for they all had heard and seen as it had been told them. This Christmas, I hope that Christ is a centerpiece of your tradition, that Christ is a centerpiece of your life. And if he's not, this would be a great time to start that. Well, let's sing on behalf of our team, our staff, Merry Christmas. And I hope as we sing this song that you feel closer to God. Let's sing now. Thank you. 
Well, again, Merry Christmas. I pray that this day is an incredible day. If we can pray for you, if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know through the Facebook page, through the YouTube page, or direct email, and we'll do our best to get connected with you. I hope that you know that we love you, and we hope that God is pouring all the peace, all the joy, all the hope that you need in your life. We're going to gather again January 1st, so get ready for a fun Sunday together as we gather and worship together and celebrate the new year together. But on again, on behalf of the staff, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year.